As the year 2023 fades into eternity, we look with bated breath upon another year. Ominous, foreboding, and portentous feelings loom as storm clouds gather. A day of reckoning approaches. The world stands at a crossroad, a turning point of sorts, of which a decision is made whether we will heed the warnings given or turn a blind eye to the impending crisis. Famines, wars, diseases, and natural disasters all herald an approaching storm, relentless in its fury. The greatest moment in all of human history is just before us, and what is at stake is a life and death matter. I, I just want to end for a few moments on your on the overview here. So you have all these remarkable things converging in a single 12-month period. You have war, pestilence, political unrest. What do you think we're looking at in the West? Like, what is this moment and how does it end? I'm sad to report that I think the West has actually collapsed. It certainly feels like we're facing um, an end game. Um, you know, we're watching our governmental structures and every one of our institutions captured, hollowed out, turned into a, a paradoxical inversion of what it was designed to do. The, the thing that worries me most, actually, they are going to create a kind of chaos from which uh, humanity may well not emerge. There's so much distrust. There's been a lot of hurt and a lot of division. You know, people get upset and don't want to be your friend because you've got a different uh, idea. Because a lot of people really believe that their side is true. It's hard to, to find a, a news outlet that actually is telling the truth. We don't want this to continue, but we still have 71 million people who voted for this man. And I, I think if it gets out of hand, uh, it's going to cause you know, people to rise up on both sides. Indian states have seceded. The United States Army ramps up activity. The White House issued warnings to the Western forces as well as the Florida Alliance. Alex Garland's mysterious civil war is coming into focus with its politically charged first trailer. The use of airstrikes against American citizens. We're moving to DC. Welcome back. That's a scene from the new movie called Civil War starring Kirsten Dunst, Jesse Plemons, and Nick Offerman. It shows America turning on itself. But here we are. There's some kind of misunderstanding here. What? Well, you're American, okay? Okay. Well, what kind of American are you? You don't know? And I watched this trailer, <laughs> and it made me oddly uncomfortable because it was just seemed a little too possible. I feel like we are headed in that direction. Again, this is a very extreme take on it, but we are headed in that direction. I think that people are preparing for this. And when we have these conversations, there is definitely a disconnect between people who are looking to potentially advance or try to come together, or unify in some way. And people are like, this is a wrap. So as soon as I get the go, it's on. There are, on any given day, thousands of armed people walking around in the United States who think that political violence is justified. Yeah. We asked people, are you personally willing to shoot somebody to accomplish a political objective? We asked it twice. Separately, are you willing to kill somebody? And they said yes. Uh, America political landscape right now is very dry tinder. Uh, it is it is rife with uh, the possibility of violence. Um, you have these conditions that are ripe for for conflict and which we've seen everywhere else in the world. Right. Uh, the entire idea of American exceptionalism and the illusion of national security is that we are strong and that we can take a blow or that we'll protect Americans from some sort of major attack or some sort of cataclysm. But the truth is that we are very brittle right now. We're always looking ahead, ahead to an America that never leaves anyone behind. Just filming, just filming. Oh my God. But what if it turns out that the greatest threat in this age of catastrophe is that this idea that Americans will pull together in times of crisis is dead? 
killed by decades of treating American freedom as the freedom to get ahead at any cost. During normal times, it's easy to think, oh, uh, the elite, the 1%, they're actually concerned about everybody's welfare. But then in that moment of crisis, when elites treat it as an opportunity for profiteering, rent-seeking, gouging from the public purse, that's the recipe for a failed state. But in the age of catastrophe, it doesn't really take an EMP to see what happens when the lights go out. And our basic institutions start to fail us. We all just lived through 2020. So what happens when somebody now doesn't have a job, doesn't have the basic kind of access to resources that we take for granted in the rich world? You turn on the tap, water doesn't come out. You go to the store and there's not enough food. You press the button and there's no electricity. What happens? Well, history tells us when people grow suddenly poorer, what happens is massive waves of authoritarianism and fascism. History tells us that in absolutely unsparing terms. So that's the story of Weimar Germany becoming Nazi Germany. It's the story of Stalinist Russia. It's the story of the Islamic world. It's also the story of America today. It's therefore with great hope that I declare COVID-19 over as a global health emergency. Well, the number of COVID deaths hitting a record low. I just feel like I'm getting my life back. We may have just seen the busiest travel day since before COVID. Pandemic era benefits vanishing with the end of the public health emergency. Testing is no longer free. Vaccines will mostly be paid for by insurance. And expanded Medicare and SNAP food benefits are now being scaled back. As the world re-emerges from the COVID-19 pandemic restrictions and breathes a sigh of relief, many are ready to put the past behind us and move forward. But is the world, unbeknownst to them, celebrating prematurely? Global leaders from around the world are actively working to establish a framework for the next pandemic that will make COVID-19 look like child's play. Healthcare professionals across the world are gearing up for a new potential pandemic, a pandemic which they say will be known as disease X. When the next pandemic comes knocking, and it will, we must be ready to answer decisively. Um, because what they're doing now, they're working on a treaty of which we will see the first draft on August 1st of this year, which is called the World Health Organization Pandemic Treaty, which, as you said rightfully, um, will be a legally binding treaty for every single, pr practically every single nation on the earth. I believe the time is right for an international treaty or other legally binding instrument to provide the framework for a more coherent and coordinated response to future epidemics. What does this mean? It means the creation of a platform that would envision all nations, all 194 member nations of the WHO to yield their decision-making authority over health care to the WHO. The COVID-19 pandemic highlighted the value of digital health solutions in facilitating access to health services. Like many countries, the European Union made significant investments in COVID-19 certificates to help people move around as safely as possible during the pandemic. Building on the success of the EU system, WHO is proud today to launch the Global Digital Health Certification Network. Again, this is the enforcement mechanism. The, the global digital vaccine passport is the enforcement mechanism for this global governance platform that the WHO has. So this is as big as it gets. This QR code on your phone, you don't, as Tony had said, you don't move unless you, the WHO approves you moving. That's very similar to the social credit system that mm -hmm. communist China uses and imposes on their own people. That's what this system envisions. I just feel a lot of concern that 2024 may be the year of a black swan event. I'll be staggered if something substantial, what most people would refer to as a black swan, but I, I would be shocked, absolutely shocked, if something massively significant doesn't happen in the next six months. 
Is the deep state mafia setting up a massive cyber attack false flag on the American people that will disrupt the 2024 election? Well, it turns out that the United States intel agencies have been running tabletop exercises on this exact scenario. And now the Department of Homeland Security head Mayorkas says the greatest cyber threat to America is something called kill wish. This gives me great pleasure because she is one of the biggest movie stars on the planet. And I've known her forever and I love it. And she's also in a new uh, apocal apocal apocalyptic apocalyptic thriller. <laughs> Leave the world behind. Oscar winner Julia Roberts plays a mother whose family getaway takes a dark turn after cyber attack causes major complications everywhere. Take a look. America comes under a cyber attack that cripples everyday technology. <laughs> leaving the nation helpless. It's the harrowing premise of the apocalyptic thriller, Leave the World Behind. Yeah, Colonel Douglas McGregor on our show has openly pointed out he believes that they're, they may end up canceling the 2024 election, that martial law will be put in place, that there will be some sort of move to push Biden into a martial law situation. The 2024 election would be canceled in some capacity, and it will be totally controlled. And, of course, your reporting with these tabletop exercises seems to, seems to suggest that this need for martial law would come as a result of a massive cyber attack. Operation Blackout, the city fictitious, the scenario real. A simulated cyber operation held in a conference room in New Hampshire with a team of hackers trying to disrupt an election. I mean, it's amazing to me that they're literally planning it. They've got the paperwork. They've been running the operations. This is not a conspiracy theory. They're laying the groundwork for this. But again, you have uh, Alexander Mayorkas after the simulation takes place saying that same exact type of attack, these killware attacks are going to be the next big thing. Adding to the sense of anxiety, the identity of the enemy behind the devastating cyber attack in Leave the World Behind is never made clear. In the chaos, society breaks down overnight. Americans are soon at each other's throats. Manhattan becomes a war zone. But could it really happen? Shira Rubinoff is a cybersecurity expert. It's not if we're going to be attacked, it's really when. She says the Netflix movie is a warning that America's defenses against cyber attacks need to be hardened right away. This is not sci-fi. This is not something that could happen. This is something that will happen if we don't protect ourselves in an appropriate way. I think that 2024 is going to be a year where it's not going to take a lot of guts for me to make this prediction because I'll tell you why it's easy to make. We're on the cusp of a major economic downturn next year. Meanwhile, economist Harry Dent is making a dire prediction about the market next year. He says 2024 is going to bring, and I'm quoting him now, the biggest crash of our lifetime. lifetime. I think 2024 will go down is the single worst year for the stock market in the whole history of the stock markets, you know, including the 1929 to 32 as any Might single the year. Okay. The timing of these things is hard to predict, but I think that likely reckoning 2024 could be a pretty good prediction for what so that's coming. But that's not just an economic story. I mean, people have psychologically, I think, a very hard time moving backward. Yes. Right. It's it's one thing to be poor. It's another thing to be poor having been rich. Yes. Very hard yes. for people to metabolize that. Mm -hmm. And so if that happens to hundreds of millions of people at the same time, people get radical. I think that if we don't channel that frustration in a direction that creates something anew, right, a sort of reincarnation of our American experiment, which is what's going to be required, then I think this ends the way that many other revolutions do it is not the creative kind, but the destructive kind. And I think the economic collapse that I think calamity that I think recession, at least that's coming, could just be the catalyst. We are headed for a global catastrophe. The climate is changing faster than our capacity to adapt. We are in the fight of our lives and we are losing. It is now or never. There is no planet B. Only immediate and drastic action will pull us back from the abyss. If 
Working apart, we are force powerful enough to destabilize our planet. Surely, working together, we are powerful enough to... Climate change is no longer a future threat, but a current reality. Global temperatures continue to set new records. A fierce heat wave is gripping parts of Europe with temperatures reaching more than 40 degrees Celsius. Most of our area under an air quality alert because of smoke blowing south from more than 100 wildfires burning all the way in Quebec. Even if you don't care about climate change, you have to realize what's happening now with the heat waves, the wildfires, the flooding matters for our security. Governments continue to meet in solemn forms that produce more pledges than action. Humanity may have missed its chance to avoid catastrophic climate change. Carbon taxes are not a better idea. Because they won't fly. They'll just talk. And we need to get past the talk because my grandchild's time is running out. We are on a highway to climate hell with our foot still on the accelerator. Will there be a full-scale war in West Asia in 2024? It is just day one of the new year and the signs are pointing at something dangerous. We maintain the right to defend ourselves um, and we won't hesitate to take the appropriate action. And these reckless Houthi attacks are a serious international problem and they demand a firm international response. But now there is pushback. Ten nations have signed up for a multinational coalition. Its job? To defend ships in the Red Sea. People are worried that we're on the brink of World War III. If someone would suggest that to you, what would you say? Well, Stu, I mean, we're looking at a level of geopolitical unrest that we haven't seen since before World War II. I mean, it feels like we're in the 1930s. I'm not saying it has gone wrong tomorrow. But we have to realize it's not a given that we are in peace. And that's why we have the plans. That's why we are preparing for a conflict with, uh, uh, with Russia and the terror groups. If it comes to it, if they attack us, we're not seeking any conflict. But if they attack us, we have to be ready. Well, now to the crisis at the southern border. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has ordered more buses to send more migrants north to Democratic-run cities amid the surge in asylum seekers. As families fight for a future, migration in America faces a reckoning. In New York City, we've been proud to help more than 110,000 asylum seekers to date. But now we need help. We've done much more than our share here to help asylum seekers coming into our country. In America's largest sanctuary city, the right to shelter is being tested and tensions are rising. We need to make sure that all these politicians pay for hanging us out to dry. It's $12 billion over the next three years to shelter and feed these people. $12 billion in taxpayer funding. New York City is limited and we are Do you get the sense as you travel the country, talk to people, speak, um, that we're on the, the, it feels like we're on the cusp of chaos? I think we're on the cusp of something. I'd like to think of it as a revolution. Now, do you feel like this is- Oh, there's something going on. I, mean, yeah. I think we're like in a 1775, spring of 1776 moment in this country, actually. There's a dam that's gonna break and, and the river's gonna go somewhere. I hope it leads towards a national revival rather than you know, other places where this could go. The year 2024 promises to be unlike any other year. The signs truly are ominous, and yet even in the midst of the approaching storm, we are to find solace in the fact that Christ warned his disciples of such a time just before his second coming. There is no doubt that what is before us will be a test of our faith, faith in the promises of God, faith in his word, and more importantly, faith in his warnings. Warnings in the prophecy that tell us exactly where these things are tending. Order out of chaos is their motto. As the world teeters on the brink of collapse, while men's hearts are failing them for fear and for looking after those things that are coming on the earth, the Bible says, let no man deceive you. 
Once the world descends into an abyss of chaos and disorder, it will be declared that men are offending God, that this sin has brought calamities, devastation, and wars, which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced, which is the mark of the beast. All that is taking place in the world today is leading to the great and final crisis when all of humanity will be faced with a decision whether to obey God or the edicts of man. It is now that we are to make the necessary preparations for this final crisis. It is now that we are to decide whether we will live or die for the cause of Christ. It is now that we are to set our affections on things above. Time is almost finished. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. They are strengthening for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world, and the final movements will be rapid ones. For more information on the topics discussed in this video, please visit our website at www.prophesyagain.org. Storm clouds gathering storm. together. Storm's coming. We see storm clouds gathering. There are already storm clouds gathering. You know a storm if is we get coming. closer and closer to the eye of this storm. Eye of the storm. Eye of the storm. storm. Unlike anything you've ever seen. You haven't seen anything yet. Brace yourself. Brace yourself, okay. America. There's no longer a gathering storm. A storm is coming. The storm is here.